Hey, welcome to live stream number 118. My name is Lars Christensen, and uh, today we're going to talk about STL files. Quick edit an STL file. So this was a model that was sent to me. Let me show it to you. That was sent to me. Um, oh, about a week or two ago. Um, and it's an STL file. At first, I actually <laughs> I thought it was a coffee table. Um, does it look like a coffee table? I don't know. But I just looked up in the name. It's a light box. <laughs> I guess, um, you know, I don't know any better than that. Um, but it's an STL file. Um, I reached out to the guy who sent it to me. Uh, he wanted to do a couple of modifications to the STL file. He got it from a website called... Thingiverse? Thingiverse, I think. I put a link to it down in the description area. It's a place where um, it looks like a lot of cool people are uploading things you can you can 3D print. So if you're into 3D printing, for example, that's the trick. Now, what I want to show you today is um, a couple of cool tricks um, about STL files inside of Fusion 360. Um, and we have talked about STL files before here on the channel. So if, if this is the first time, if this is the first time you're watching the YouTube channel here, the live streams, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, but even if you watch a few, but you're like, whoa, STL files, something new. Uh, there's some in uh, previous uh, live streams. Now, I used to hate STL files. And the reason I used to hate them is because an STL file is only made up of rectangle, uh, triangles, sorry. it's it's really a shell of a model um, completely um, completely made a shell made out of triangles and you can see that um, if you zoom if I zoom in on some of these areas here uh, I hope you can see it it's just all there's no radiuses everything is just triangles and the two reasons that I don't like SCL files first of all because in the olden days, you didn't used to have to, you couldn't do anything with an STL file. It was literally just to, to show on your screen. Luckily, with Fusion, that have changed. But secondly, um, you know, if you're looking at a development like this area here, you know, it's not very accurate. It's it's no more accurate than than the triangles are created. Um, so when people used to send these to me and be like, "Hey, can you machine this uh, or work with this?" It used to be a little bit of a nightmare. But like I said, Fusion, we have some neat tricks. Now, like I said, um, we worked at it before. If you go to your preferences, if you go to your preview, you you have a, a mess workspace you can turn on. And when you do have a mess file, what we have here, if we go up and look at the at the drop down here, you'll see it's a mess body. Uh, we do get a, uh, a mesh environment. Like I said, we've been in here before. Um, especially we talked about if you got STL files that was huge. And when I'm talking about huge, I'm talking about the number of triangles, right? So I just want to make sure that if, if, you, if you get this, sorry, I'm re maybe repeating myself. I just want to make sure you understand that the STL file is just triangles. Um, and normally you can't control this, the size of the triangles, but many times causes that you can't control the tolerance of it, right? So if you have like a curved surface like a mouse and it's all built up of triangles, you can't get you know that, that curvature uh, in there. So what I'm referring to when I'm saying a big STL file, that means when there's thousands upon thousands uh, of triangles, a very complex shape, um, then it can be a problem. But you can do this. Let's go back in. We're actually gonna be in the model space today. But it's very not normal when we're talking STL files. If you right click on the mesh body, you can go to properties. And then it shows you over here the facet count or the, the face count or whatever you want. And you can see that this model is only, <laughs> only, but it's only 5,680 um, triangles or, or faces, I should say, made up of triangles. And... Uh, Though that that that's a lot, um, it's not too much for fusion. What I can actually do now, notice this: I'm in the model environment. I want to make sure you 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 get this. And I've 
upload it by using the upload button right here. Um, uploaded this STL file into our library. Just open it up, oops, open it up here. If I right click on the STL file and I go down to mess to B rep. Now this is only gonna work if uh, the STL file is small enough. If it's too big, this is not gonna work. But I can say here, mess to B rep, and you will see over here, we get a very uh, welcoming <laughs> icon, new body. Click on that, and Fusion will actually convert this STL file into a solid body, but of course we love, because we, we love solid bodies, yay. Um, now, the, the question I got, this was not really the exciting thing, uh, but the, the question I got from one of you guys were, I would like to make this panel thinner. How do, do I modify the thickness of this panel? Well, this is a, a, a solid body now, but it's still made up of triangles. That has not changed. I mean, it's a, it's a watertight solid body, but the faces are still broken down into, into to these triangular shape. But that's okay, we can, we can work with that. So what I'm gonna use is, I'm actually gonna use the standard press pull to move this face. Um, but as you can see, I can't just select, I mean, I, I could go in here, hold down control and select each individual component. What well, is actually not too bad uh, right here. And then hit Q, but I wanna show you another tool because that's, you know, it's all about learning here, right? If you go up to um, your, your select area up here, uh, anytime I'm working with something like triangular shapes, like a mesh, or in this case, something that was an STL, I really love to use the paint selection instead of the standard window selection. So I'm gonna hit paint selection. Now when I've done that, you'll see the icon changes to that. Um, also be aware of that in here, there is a lot of different selection filters that we can select in here. And if we actually go up a little bit, you will see that there is a selection priority where we can select a priority in here. In my case, I wanna select a face. So if I select, so first look at the selection filters, look at everything is checked except select through. If I go up and select, select face priority and go back into that selection filter, you will see that it narrowed it down just to those body faces. So that's what that does, okay. Now, with that paint selection, and since I'm only selecting faces, I can literally just paint, hold down my left mouse button, and I can paint all the way around there to do that. Now, I could probably have <laughs> picked and hold down control or command on a Mac and selected this as fast as I showed this, but now you know. Now, with all this selected, I'm gonna hit Q for press pull, right? So this is pretty standard modeling environment, it's gonna become an offset face. So now I can actually stop pulling in, in this here. Now, if I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, I'm gonna go minus 25 millimeters. I'm gonna highlight it. So no, look at the screen, so minus 25. See how narrow it, it's just got? Let me change it back to zero. So that was the original size. Oh, it unselected one of them. There you go. Hit OK to that. And not only did you just see that it made this panel thinner, Fusion actually also repaired these faces, right? Um, it made it one face now. So what Fusion did, if you spin it around, uh, this was kind of like how it looked originally. What Fusion did was because we ch it had to change uh, the kind of like the face identity of these when it moved the face, it saw that it could just repair that whole face and still keep it watertight. Now, another thing I wanted to show you um, that is interesting about this is the hole that was in the fruit here. Now, that was actually never a hole, right? Because it was triangular shape it was made out of. Um, and this is one of the dangerous things about working with mass data, like an STL file is, well, we could all agree it looked like a hole, um, but we know that it's not because they got these faces. Well, let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna show you a little tip to fix that. So what I wanna do is, and by the way, you will see that I'm 
because I'm working with this STL, I'm working with no history down here. You could go up here and right click uh, and turn capture history on, but I actually don't recommend it when you're working uh, with this kind of mesh body. Um, it can actually kind of make things a little bit more difficult having a history in here. So what I want to do is I'm going to repair this hole. So I'm going to open a new sketch on that face. And I don't really know what the size of this hole is because, you know, I don't, there was somebody on Thingiverse who was kind enough uh, to, uh, who was kind enough to, to, um, to, to provide this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line, but I'm assuming that, you know, the intersection of these uh, here are kind of like true. So I'm going to create a line across from here and I'm actually going to place a dimension on it. Now, notice that it's fully defined. So when I place this dimension of 270.067, I get this warning that just letting me know that it's going to be a, a driven dimension instead of a driving dimension. We talked about this in a live stream, I think last week, how there's brackets around it, which just means it doesn't, it's nothing bad. It just shows us that this dimension is not driving the length because the two endpoints does. But I wanted to show this uh, because we're going to use this to cut this part. Now, you could be tempted to hit C for circle and just draw a circle from the midpoint of that line right to that intersection there. Um, but it's actually going to cause a little bit of a problem. And I'm zooming in a little bit so we can see. Um, the problem is that um, when, if we cut like this, there's going to be what I think you would call like a zero energy happening on each intersection where the circle meets the high point of this wannabe STL file circle. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make the circle a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 10 millimeters bigger. So I'm going to type in 280.067. Okay, so if you look at the, so if you look right now, we know the line or the, the, the max of this wannabe circle was 270, now I made it 10 millimeters tall, uh, bigger. I'm going to hit enter to that, and then I'm going to use the press pull again, so Q, and just select uh, that sliver right there, and now I can use it as a cut, so cut right through. And I'm just going to say through all because that's what I normally do and hit OK. And that means that now we have a, now we actually have a hole. Now the hole is too big, right? Uh, but that's OK. If we hit Q again and select the inside of the hole, um, we can actually make it we can make it smaller, right? So I can say now this is a radius here. So I can say 270.067 divided by 2. You can do math right in here, right? Hit OK, and I have now just fixed uh, that hole that was there before um, and now made it, made it better. And just to make it cooler, because I did that, it actually healed up that back face. Because again, Fusion had to solve, because we made that cut all the way through, it had to solve what we cut through, what is this back face. So we have just uh, not only made this wall thinner, of this STL file. We've actually also repaired something wannabe round hole to, uh, to be, be round. Now, does it matter that this model here is all made up of, of triangular kind of shapes? Not necessarily. If you just gotta 3D print this, you're probably okay. Uh, I have had people who send me this type of files and want me to machine it and then it can actually become uh, a little bit of a hassle. I want to show you one more really, really cool trick. If you are not familiar with, uh, with the replace face command, <laughs> you're in for a treat in a second. So what I mean by accuracy is, again, these triangles. Look at this radius here, for example, right? That is not a real radius. It's, it's again, triangular. Uh, of course, the smaller the triangle is, the more you can say it's coming closer to a circle uh, or a development of a, a, a curve. Uh, but, you know, again, it's hard to control. And actually, if we look at this flat spot here, or this curve, if I go to the right view, 
and you look at this, you can, you can see, if I zoom in, you can see that this is broken down by flat sections, and that will definitely show up uh, pretty much whatever you're doing. I mean, even if you're 3D printing this, uh, that will, will show up. So that's why that replace face can be really, uh, really cool. So let me show you that on this section here. Let's make that smooth. So a trick to do that is um, we're basically going to use a tool we've used before on the live stream, and that is the sweep tool. Um, but I'm not going to do this in solid. I'm actually going to do it in in a surface or patch environment. But that's that's okay. It's not really that confusing. I'm going to open up a sketch here. So I'm going to click sketch and just click on this face here. It's going to go normal too. And I'm going to use a spline to create this curve. So I'm going to go over and select spline. And just make sure that when you zoom in that you get the right edge, right? Because that's kind of like what we're going to attach it to. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to zoom all the right back in here. And you can really see how this is not a radius, right? It's, I mean, of course, remember, we are very close right now. So I'm going to place the spline, other spline endpoint right here and, and hit OK. So now we have a spline. And with these splines, we get these spline handles, right? I'm actually going to make this spline handle uh, you see over here. Oh, my selection is off here. Hang on. Go in here and select. That's the only thing when you have used these selection tools is that you kind of like want them back again. Um, if I select this spline here, I'm going to make this handle horizontal. I've talked about before using constraints on your spline. So I'm going to make this one horizontal. Okay, now it's a little bit hard to see the spline right now. But if we go down to the spline point down here, and click on the spline, get that handle, I can start to kind of like shape that. And of course, I can't make it match exactly what um, we have because that's kind of junk. Um, <laughs> because it's just all these triangles. But we can get close, right? I think that looks, let's just say that that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave this as my, my first spline here. I'm going to hit stop that sketch. So now we have um, that spline sitting right there on that face. Now, and, and though that I'm not capturing all the history, um, we still have sketch bodies. We can still do a lot of all these things. I'm going to open a second sketch because this is our profile. Now we need the path. And I'm going to open a sketch here. Right click, create a sketch. And uh, I'm just going to make a line. So I click the line tool. And I'm just going to make sure I'm snapping into that same intersection uh, I had for where my, my curve was. And just for the, to make it a little bit easier here, I'm actually, well, it's probably easier if I look at it, sorry. Um, I'm actually just going to make it a little bit longer. And I'm just going to place it out here. And because I couldn't quite see where to place it, I'm going to give it a horizontal relationship right there. Okay, now it's straight. So, what do I got? Let me just hide the body. Uh, right now, we have the, the, the curve we just uh, created, the spline, and then I just made this line and made this longer. Now, if we go over to the patch environment, and we use the sweep over there, select the profile, select the path, we get a, a surface instead of, and the reason I go over the pants is because this surface is no thickness. It's almost thinking like a piece of paper. Uh, and it's laying right, if I turn the body back on, it's laying right on top of, it's the surface is right there, right? Um, let's right click appearances. Let's take paint, go to faces and paint, metallic. Huh, yeah, sure. Ooh, how about a red? Got to download that. Come on, there we go. So red is now the surface. Okay, and you can see how it's kind of like laying right through uh, our model there. Now, with that surface right there, and I'm just going to leave that here in the tree. It doesn't, doesn't hurt anything. I go back to the model environment. Okay, and now I have to select all these sections in here. Let me just hide our surface, red surface. If um, we go over here to the replace face, 
it says the source uh, for the faces and that's going to be all these and again you could select them individually uh, you could go down to paint go down here select face priority oops and just oh face priority like that there we go and uh, I'll paint it here probably zoom then so I can there we go so we got all these selected I X out of my replace face so we got those 20 faces selected now what is the one we're gonna replace it with and that's gonna be that surface so I'm gonna select that take a second and then hit OK and we are literally telling fusion that we want to replace uh, the face um, that we just had on our model with that surface. So now if I turn that surface back off, you will see that we just eliminated all those, all those lines and we now have a nice uh, surface that follows that curve we created. And I will just leave this, uh, this surface body, I wouldn't delete it or anything, just leave it over there. And you could now do that for all this right so i mean you will see down here we have some weird development right now but i mean you could go in if you had to not if you none of you don't have to don't do it if you don't have to but if we wanted to kind of like get rid of these triangles that would be one of the tools you could use this uh, uh, replace, uh replace face so from the from from this kind of mess to to a uh, a flat surface uh, like that so uh, just to recap, working with STL files inside of Fusion, just it's kind of changing the dynamics a little bit. Uh, how we can actually we can actually work with them, we can modify them uh, in here. Now, again, it will always be a struggle if you have an STL file with a bunch of faces uh, on it or triangles on it. Uh, you definitely want to be cautious. And like I said, we've created different live streams on that in the past. If you can't remember it, my email address is down in the description area, lars.christensen at autodesk.com, and I'll, I'll direct you to, to the videos. Um, so SEL files can be a little tricky. Also remember the accuracy of them can be, you know, whatever those triangles are, those triangles are. But definitely with this tip here, you can go in and you can start modifying and even replace uh, some, some of these tools. So, man, I hope that this was useful. Um, you guys, 165 people in the live stream. I really appreciate it. If you're watching the recording, I also appreciate you take time for that. If you like this, as always, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, please be honest, hit the thumbs down, it's okay. Um, you know, I'm not gonna cry too much. And if you haven't already to subscribe to the channel, then, um, then appreciate that too. Tomorrow is Cam. Tomorrow, we actually gonna machine an STL file because you can actually also throw uh, cam toolpath on that. So tomorrow's all about cam. If you're not into cam, if that don't interest you, I don't blame you. Um, then tomorrow, take the day off, have a beer, relax with the family, whatever, whatever you want. And then hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday because Monday is actually a holiday. Huh. So, uh, so that will be Tuesday. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these. You're awesome. If you're watching the recording, thank you. I'm going to end the broadcast and jump into uh, the live stream. Take care.